How many units do you see in your books? You can take a look at your books. How many units do you see? Actually. Ignore the review. Ignore the review as a unit. Six. Ignore the holiday. Five. How many units can you count in the term? At least five. Okay, at least tentatively five. Okay, if you are following the book, you are following the book until five, unit five. So you will be creating uh, five units of lessons. And five units of lessons means two weeks per unit. Okay, two weeks per unit and the extras are your reviews. And like I told you, your, you can put your review in, your reviewing. And the holiday unit, you can add in an additional, like you, maybe you want to do Christmas, maybe you want to do Halloween, maybe you want to do St. Patrick's Day, maybe you want to do a craft, like making something. That's very possible, that's up to you. Okay. But use this as your framework when you are creating your own outline. Okay. So this is the book. And, and like I told you, this would be the dialogue section. So the dialogue section is always at the beginning. And this is the Darby book. I'm sorry, it's not always at the beginning for all the books. My mistake. Okay? It's a brief dialogue. Some books have additional dialogues. They have it after they've done the words. For example, here. So at the beginning, I had the reading section, right? The books. But... Some books will have another additional dialogue at the back. After they've done the vocabulary, then there's the dialogue. And then you could actually use that and they can actually come and act it out for you. Okay, so here's your book. And um, on the beginning, if you look in all of your books, you'll see I have this part, which is the reading part. And then you have a section with vocabulary and vocabulary. You'll have a section that's vocabulary. Every unit has got it. It will maybe say, let's learn. It will be more clear and say, let's learn. Then you know that's a section you need to be teaching the kids. See this? There's a sentence pattern. I'm a, and there's your vocabulary. So normally we would start off with the vocabulary and then do the sentence pattern because it's first come vocabulary, okay? Then your next section would be your phonics over here. Okay, here's your phonics. This is just for Darby. Every book has got a different setup, but these are the keys you should be looking for. Your vocabularies, your sentence patterns, your phonics, and the extras all they have songs in. They have songs in it. And they have things like daily talk or challenge time, like this one, they have challenge time. Okay, these are the textbooks that you will find in your school. You will probably all be using it for your different grades.
example, I have to say, but now you, you all have it, you can turn to grade four lesson plan. There's a grade four lesson plan, and if you just turn to it, it's at the back of all the pages. At the back, okay? Grade four lesson plan, I think you can practice it. Okay? This is very tiny, so I'll just we'll go through it quickly. You'll see your one's nice and big, and you'll be able to read it. Okay, so this is a typical example of how I would normally teach from the textbook. Okay? It's this textbook that all of you will be getting. Okay? So, as you can see on top, I have it reading. Reading, unit 1 to unit 2. And then I have stamp, and stamp time and spelling a word aloud. Okay? So, first off, what I should talk to you about is this is the format of your lesson plan. It has a warm up, it has a review, and it has a, yes, yes, a main, and it has a wrap up. Okay? That's the format of all your lessons. You have a warm up, you have your review, you have your main, and you have a wrap up. Okay? And that's how your lessons will run. Warm up, review, main, wrap up. Okay, so my warm up, I decide to do a reading, like I told you at the beginning of every class, I'll do reading. And then this is an opportunity for my students to already start learning a lot of stamps because they're busy reading, right? And then I will warm it up by example, I will ask I will say a word cat. Who can tell me how you spell cat? And I allow them to use their textbooks. Okay, allow them to use the textbooks because they need to find the word. And that's difficult already, so finding it is great for them, okay? So for example, I'll say, okay, who can tell me how to, to spell banana? Okay, and then the kids all raise their hands, and I will use the stamp, and I will give it to them, give them their stamp. So, okay, this is my warm-up. After they've read, then this is how I will check what have they been reading. It's not just brainless reading, but I'm also checking, did you actually get any of those words that you were busy reading? Okay, so I started off with reading, and then I will go to introducing my unit. Like I told you, every unit has got the dialogue section, then introducing my unit. Okay, so I have this, like I said, we have the CD or the ebook, and I would show them this picture, and I would ask them questions about this picture. I would say, okay, what's that? What's that? Who's he? Who's she? Just look at it first, okay? And I would play this. I would play the CD and they would listen. And then stop and I will read this with them. And then I will ask them questions about it very briefly because as you can see, I've put on the 10 minutes. Sometimes it's eight minutes. As they progress through the term, I make it five minutes. Okay, I don't take too long. It just depends from class to class initially. Okay, so I introduce the poster. I ask questions like why, where, what, who, who has got red shoes, okay, uh, who is this, who is that lady over there, and at the beginning of your book, you have the characters, your characters is at the beginning of all your books, you have the names of your characters, so it means they have to go back all the way, but where's the name of that guy, I found it, it's, mm -mm, that's the name, okay, so that's what you can do at the beginning of a unit, I ask them, who is it? And then I ask them things like, what is it, where is it? And then I sometimes, at the beginning, I will ask who, what, where. Later on, I will check have they been paying attention to the words. And then I will do, what day is it? Oh, who can tell me what word is missing from here? Uh, it's, oh, what day? Who can tell me? Okay, things like that. Those are the things I do at the beginning. Okay, after I've done that, I will teach my vocabulary, okay? So in this example that I have, I have bank, hospital, and so on. And in this, in this textbook that I have, I have what's like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I will teach them the vocabulary and put it on the board. This is my vocabulary that I'm using for my grade fives. Show you this because I think you want to see how I do it. Okay, so I finish asking them questions about the poster, and now I'm going to introduce the vocabulary. And I would say, okay, everyone, let's say together, shin, shin, shin. 
Okay, normally I show the picture first and then I show the word. Picture, word, picture, word. You see what I'm doing? Picture, word, picture, word. That way they get familiar with both, okay? So, shin. Okay, next one. Cheek. 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 Cheeks. 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 Sucked. 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 This one everybody liked. I wonder why. Okay. Stumped. 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 Yeah. 
<laughs> From which team do you want to change with? My score? Yeah. Oh. Yes, your team score. Leopard, what would you like to change? Leopard. Okay, and then you change it. Okay. Whoa. Okay. I do this. And that's what gets them ready into this game. That's why I tell you, put your game on at the beginning of class so that they can see what it is. They'll be curious to know what it is. And yes, they will ask questions. You can explain it as you go along, or you can explain it at the beginning of the class. It's entirely up to you how you feel, okay? What if your team's already winning? Can you change other teams? Yes, you can. Uh, no, you may not change teams. You may not change teams. If the other team says it, yeah? Did, did I miss it? Did, so Ben just chose to change yes. his team points to yes. another because theirs were, were, yes. were greater. Yes. Were greater. Yes. Can you change, if you're already leading, can you change the other team point? Yes. Um, kind of it depends on you. It depends on your on your rules. What are you your doing? rules. My okay. rules would be somewhat straightforward. But if they're all that, I keep it tricky. A little bit more tricky. I keep that rule simple for my younger grades. I would say, for the older grades, I could kind of do something like that. I would do something like that where I would, yes, you may switch the other two points. Why not? It's what your if they're case. all the same points? Oh, then they're all the same. And there's nothing there to do. Okay? Okay, so one more time, everybody say.
focus on the word and it's fine for them. Okay? So I use it for everything and it's really good for, for our students. Motivation is great. Okay? Now, if you see, I said, so the so we just did a draw. You just did a brief draw of the vocabulary. We just went through the vocabulary. We just draw the crime. Right? But I still need to teach them um, the sentence patterns, right? So when I teach the sentence pattern, I also use an activity. Um, what's my love? The softer. And um, it's very easy one. So I'm just showing you what I did on the lesson. Okay. So, so yeah. would you hide this card for me, please? I'm not going to look. Can I look? No, not yet. They're not, they 
they're going to make mistakes. It's normal for them to make this kind of mistake. So keep cute. And then you can write it again. Just so that they understand how many times they need to be right modeled the first time. After that, it'll become second because you're going to do this every time you're introducing a unit, maybe. So you they will get used to what you're doing. They can become familiar and you can actually grow within that routine of what you are doing. Okay. So now everybody's busy writing, and I have little teachers, and I have Taryn, and I have my readers, and what I will normally do at the end of class is they're usually faster than everybody else. I have them go around, sometimes they help their friends, and I have them collect the books and check that everybody has completed their homework before they leave. They will check, teacher, he did not do it, okay? So that way, Nobody needs to come back all the time. And I know for sure everybody's completed the test that I'm going to make. So that is it.